Hi everyone, in this video lesson I'm going to talk about a fluid typography and how to easily get rid of that old-fashioned way of making typography responsive in Elementor. As you probably know, responsiveness in Elementor completely relies on the breakpoint system. That kind of a system is okay and useful for, I believe, everything else but typography. If you ask yourself about the difference between the fluid typography and the breakpoint-based responsiveness, let me show you a side-by-side -side example of what I'm actually talking about. So the left-hand side of the screen shows the text behavior when traditional breakpoint system is being deployed, which by the way relies on a CSS media queries. While the right-hand side demonstrates the use, the use of the CSS clamp function, which is the base of fluid typography in this tutorial. It's quite evident that the left-hand side text size only changes, changes when a particular breakpoint is reached and that the text size on the right-hand side changes gradually in accord with the viewport size. Okay, what I have on the screen right now is what I call a typography playground page. And if I were to start a new website, I would definitely create one of these pages. Maybe not as simple as this one, probably something closer to what I'm up to, but I created one for sure. Why? Because it allowed me to do all kinds of typography related tests without being distracted by colors, uh, images or any other type of graphic element. For the purpose of this tutorial and for the sake of simplicity, I have created a set of heading elements, one, uh, H1 through H5, a paragraph of big text, normal text and a small text. My site setting is populated with a few global colors already. Okay, I have uh, global fonts defined, two of which which are custom ones like big text and small text. I also, I have also made both of my custom fonts responsive in a way that Elementor allows me to, okay? I have no other option but to go for the breakpoints. Likewise, I have predefined the theme style typography, a body text and all of my heading elements. All of them are responsive per breakpoint, so everything has to be by the book, so to speak. <clears throat> if you wonder how to define the perfect size of all heading elements, here's what I usually do. I simply go to the typescale.com where I can choose the scale type according to which font sizes are being generated automatically. Okay? You can go from minor second to, to golden ratio which provides the most dramatic offset of the font size. So. Whichever scale type you select, an instant preview is being generated as well as the copy-paste CSS. I usually go for the perfect fourth, which is exactly what I use now on my typography playground page. You may notice that typescale.com doesn't generate font size in a responsive fashion, so no media queries or whatsoever. And in order to comply Elementor's responsive breakpoints, I do the following. For the H1 element desktop size, I pick the default font size, which is 4.209 rams. For the H1 element tablet size, I choose the next smaller font size that belongs actually to, to the H2 element, which is 3.157. And then for the H1 element mobile, mobile uh, font size, I'll go one extra size down. That, that's been assigned to the H3 element, and which is 2.369 reps. The same logic is being applied for every next heading element, okay? When it comes to the body font size in two of my custom fonts, big text and small text, I repeat the same procedure, elementary-wise, with, with an exception of choosing the desktop, tablet and mobile font size in a, in a non-cascading fashion, so to speak. Now let's see what it takes to forget all about defining font sizes that way. Let's see how to improve the workflow a little bit. Let's create a new custom code file for Elementor now and which is going to be used to, to add our custom CSS code. Why? Because we are about to overwrite Elementor's default styles. So I'm going to name that new document site-wide CSS. Uh, I will let it in queue in a header with the lowest priority possible. My custom code has to be wrapped up with a pair of style tags, of course. 
Like I have said at the beginning, fluid typography is easy to be done by using the CSS clamp function. So let's see how that function can be partnered up with the font size. Because of the fact that fluid typography does require a certain dose of math, and because I don't want to do any calculations manually, I'll go to another website that does all the hard work for me. The site is named Font Size Clamp Generator, and you can find the, the site, that site URL in the description of this video if you like. So the clamp function itself takes three parameters. The first one is a minimum value, uh, the next is preferred value, and the last one is the maximum value. Now, if I start, if I start off with my H1 heading element, a minimum value corresponds to the H3 heading element, remember, but, it, but it's actually a font size of the H1 element on mobile devices. Okay, a preferred value, the middle one, that is a result of complex mathematical calculations, so to speak, which by the way includes all four parameters. And lastly, the maximum value, which corresponds to the actual font size. What I have to do at the end is to copy the bottom line and paste to my custom CSS document. So I'll continue generating the, the fluid font size for all other he heading elements. We'll handle our heading elements first, then start with the body text and all other custom fonts that we might have defined under the site settings. Now that we have all of them ready, and in order to properly override or replace the current breakpoint system, we need to know the site settings ID, which was generated by Elementor. So I'll just use developer tools to inspect one of my heading elements, and it, and it will do fine. And simply read out that ID, which always starts with an elementor dash kit keyword and ends with a number as you can tell it is four here but regardless of the number at the end just copy or memorize everything then paste or type an entire string up front not a string it's a class name up front the heading element in our custom code css file at this point our heading elements should be completely fluid let's check it out Okay, everything works just fine. Let's handle text now. Once again, I'll use developer tools, scroll up and down a little bit until I find the site settings main set of rules. Okay, in my case, it'll be the custom class name Elementor Kit 4. What you can see here is a bunch of CSS variables. Some of them are used to store the information about the colors being used, okay, global colors, while others keep, keep the information about font size, line height, font family, and similar. And in case you didn't notice, some of the variables are named, at least partially named, after the default name assigned by Elementor, such as primary, secondary, text font, accent font, okay while some other CSS variables use some strange alphanumeric combo. Unfortunately, these strange ones actually relate to my custom fonts, big text and small text, and I'm able to identify them, luckily, by the font size. So what I'm gonna do is copy everything from developer tools and paste into my custom code file, okay, entire block. After that, I'll simply remove all variables that are not font size related because once again our target is the font size while everything else remains as is. In order to be able to identify these strange variables I'm going to add a comment at the end. The first one relates to the big text okay so I'm going to label it big text and right after is the small text. And the last one is the body text font size that doesn't require any special identification okay it's not even a variable css variable now that i got these ready all i have to do is to get back to the font size clamp generator website and clamp up these text sizes like i said procedure is identical to what i did with heading elements but having a one little exception so instead of the ram units i'll use pixels it absolutely makes no difference everything is going to work just fine okay 
When it comes to pasting or assigning the value from clamp generator to the CSS variable in our custom code file, you'll have to remove that font size part and leave the clamp only. All right, that's because the real font size property is being stored in a variable. So I'm going to repeat the process for the small text and body text followed by the preview. As you can see, we, we no longer deal with breakpoints. Everything will be perfect. Everything will be perfect at any given viewport size, be it a TV or a smartwatch, whatever. For those people who are still new to, a, to the site settings and the global typography in general, I'll demonstrate how to actually use it or apply site-wide. Let's say I added the, the icon box widget to stage. So how to apply or replace widget's default title and description with the custom defined big text and small text respectively. Okay, so I simply open the style tab, choose my uh, ready-made big text in place of title typography, and then choose small text in place of my description typography. That's all. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope something like that can be helpful at some point of your work. Don't forget to check the video description for links to website that I used in this tutorial. And if you ever plan to buy Elementor Pro for yourself or your client, please use my affiliate link, which can be found in the description of this video as well, because this is how you can support this channel and motivate me to create more videos like this one. Other than that, peace and love.